Hey everybody, Cody Benz here, doing another Watts new video uh, for this week. Big thing about this one is basically the 1.7.1 1 uh, common test server. It's now live. Uh, you'll see a little bit of stuff about uh, that for this video, or I guess a lot of stuff, uh, to be completely honest. Um, and also, you know, before I get into basically the dual barrel tanks and the test server here, I'm going to uh, go over some other stuff that's been happening in the game. Uh, so all these links are going to be in the video description in the order that you see them. Uh, this just kind of talks about 1.7.1. It's a preview. Uh, most likely you'll be able to find a full, you know, kind of announcement. It's not up currently across, you know, .com, .eu, um, .ru for, you know, the World of Tanks website. But we're getting three uh, basically dual barrel tanks for the Russian heavy tanks, the IS-2-2, the IS-3-2, <laughs> and the SD-2. Um, they're going to branch off of the KV-3. We're also going to get um, a new reward for merit where you can demount equipment for free without spending gold. Honestly, you know, I, I guess it's useful. At the same time, though, um, you know, it's nice for free-to-play players, but it's not that big of a thing at it, but it is a nice gesture. Uh, moving on, the referral program, you know, 2.0 is coming to a close, so make sure you read up about that. You have until... Um, I don't even know when it completely ends here. Uh, the second season, it says it is drawing to a close, so I would look into that if you're doing it. <laughs> but season three starts the 23rd, uh, so when it comes to you know new reward tanks and stuff, pretty good one with the T26E5, to be completely honest, uh, for a premium tank. So definitely uh, keep an eye out for that if you do referral programs. This weekend, across all servers, there's a vehicle trade-in. Uh, the eighth one uh, that they're doing it starts the 17th so basically today but it does kind of go longer than just this weekend has a full list of tanks you can trade in and what you can get uh, just do note though that you can only trade in vehicles of a lower or equal tier and you know basically you can't like trade something there's basic rules <laughs> read about it here i don't want to get into too many specifics something nice though um, unfortunately, so across all servers, the Dawn of Industry event for people excited about Clan Wars has been delayed. A lot of people have been pissed off. Honestly, though, um, like Wargaming did the right thing. Basically, from what I gather from it, from hearing people talk about it, and Wargaming, they've talked publicly about it too. Obviously, like they've even made an article here across all their things. Um, basically, a couple days before the event was due to begin, there's a massive denial of service attack, specifically on the Russian server, but the NA server like two days ago had some issues even logging in. So who knows if it's, and even EU has had some issues over the past couple weeks, like people logging in, but the Russian servers with the vast amount of them, a lot of them, I think all but like one or two at some point were like almost unplayable. You couldn't log into them, stuff like that. So there was a massive denial of service attack on Wargaming. Um, so they decided best to kind of cancel that for now, or not cancel it, I guess uh, postpone until next month. Uh, obviously it pisses people off because, like, my the reason I don't do Clan Wars is it, it's basically like a second job. A lot of people took time off of their jobs, vacations, so on and so forth, moved their schedules around to do this, and now, you know, kind of at the last minute it changed. But it's better than them doing it and then having so many issues to where people would complain and everyone would be even more frustrated. Um, better just to push it off. Uh, so that's unfortunately something where even if you don't do Clan Wars, you might notice some stability issues till they figure out how to uh, kind of put things in place to stop it. Um, because it's, it's kind of hard to do denial of service to stop them. This weekend for the NA server specifically, we have a 2XP uh, weekend. And we also have XP to free XP conversion. Um, you know, it's not the best one. I believe we've gotten a 1 of 40 before for XP. So just do note, I, I'm pretty sure there's been a higher one before than 35. I could be wrong, but uh, just do note, it's not it's not exactly the best weekend. Uh, they're mainly focusing on the tank trade in this weekend. So we'll probably see something, I would guess, uh, you know, the following weekend coming up here. Possibly for NA servers or something a little bit, you know, more juicy. Tank nuts. Um, so uh, basically, there's Richard Cutlin. Um, I think he's over on EU, but more or less they started a podcast um, featuring you know different people. I'm sure they're going to be doing maybe once a week something like that. But there's something worth uh, looking at, something good to listen into the car or listen in the car, so on and so forth. Last little bit of news. So 
super test. Two links here for it. Uh, basically, this is rumored to be the tier 9 reward for, say, like, this year, Frontline, Steel Hunter, uh, possibly. So the bat chat, uh, it's a tier 9 bat chat. It's basically a mix between the light and the medium line for the uh, French lines. Uh, they changed the name from the bat chat 12 MLE 54 to bat chat. Basically, I read this as burlesque, <laughs> but I don't know why that comes to me. Uh, more or less, though, they changed some stats of it. You can see the stats on uh, Watt Express and also some screenshots of it. You know, it's basically a mix between the medium and lights. Uh, very small um, auto loader. Uh, I think it only has two shells, if I'm not mistaken. So, let's get into the uh, dual barrel tanks here. Um, basically, if you log into the common test, I highly recommend it. Because you can play around, you have a bunch of stuff to use. It's going to branch off of the uh, KV-3, basically. We've known this for a while. Uh, so, 51,300 experience. Getting into the IS-2, uh, I'm just going to purchase it here. Uh, we're going to go... You know, with it here. I know this is going to take some time, so if you don't care about seeing any about this, or if you don't care much about seeing this, thank you for watching. And that's kind of your update. I'm going to go into the experience requirements, the grind, and also like armor real fast. I'm going to play one battle, because why not? But the IS2, uh, so after you get into this thing, so something Wargaming's been doing uh, somewhat recently. Notice it starts with a 85mm gun, albeit the penetration's okay, you know, 212mm penetration. But do note, you know, basically you're going to be playing a tier 8 tank with an 85mm gun as a heavy. Yes, there's two of them, uh, but just do note, uh, this tank is probably going to be the toughest uh, grind, especially with the amount of um, experience you need to basically uh, get into it here. I wonder if you can mount... I wonder if you can mount the gun first. We'll see. But I'm not going to play the tier 8 or the tier 9 in this video. I'm just going to probably do the tier 10. I'm curious, though, if you can... Okay, I guess you can mount the tier... Yeah, I bought it. <laughs> I'm an idiot. So you can mount the guns before anything else. That's that's good, at least. So the grind, you know, initially, you know, it's going to be a little bit jarring, I feel like, with the 85mm. And, you know, getting into the IS... Uh, two or IS three two. <laughs> it's gonna be tough, freaking <laughs> pronouncing these tanks. Um, it just sounds weird, you know, saying the two numbers right after one after another. Yeah, come on. There we go. At least you start out, you know, with a hundred millimeter. But I just do note with the blueprints, something that you've seen, and they've kind of experimented with uh, monetizing the grinds a little bit differently. There's a crap load of experience for the modules. Now that we have blueprints and you can kind of deduct the um, experience off of the specific tanks, I just do note it is uh, pretty um, expensive, you know, between getting both of these guns. It's a lot of uh, experience right off the bat. Curious though with this tank, so I'm just checking this partially for my own personal interest uh, and curiosity, not just for the video here. I'm curious, so you can't load the top 122 without the um, other turret. But I know a lot of people like to kind of uh, save things. So if you load the other turret, unfortunately, now you need the tracks. You know, so unfortunately, it's not going to be the easiest thing to grind right off the bat. Like you can go with either the 122 and you can go with the stock turret. Or if you want the upgraded turret and the big gun, you're going to have to basically get everything except for the engine. And you're going to be really slow. <laughs> so they kind of thought things through here, um, unfortunately. But getting into the kind of the crown jewel of the line, the SD2 here. Obviously, there's, there's nothing to grind on this tank. Um, unless I completely missed something for the past few months here. Uh, basically, yeah good but before i pop into a battle real fast um something i wanted to point out with these tanks is if you compare these to basically the premium tank uh, that we you know all kind of know the object 703 uh, version 2 these tanks are a little bit different in playstyle. so seven degrees of gun depression uh this one is eight you know i know that i don't have the full loadout but it's eight degrees on both of the currents and eight degrees on this one uh, the SD2. Uh, the premium tank has 5 degrees of gun depression, so do note these things are actually going to be able to hold down quite a bit. And getting into 
Uh, so basically some armor here. I'm just going to go into the uh, tier 10 and then other ones I'll glance over real fast. But more or less with 8 degrees of gun depression, you're looking, you know, something that plays somewhat like a 60 TP. I've been referring it to. Armor wise though, like you still have, like this is technically a weak spot, you know, for tier 10s, tier 9s that use premium rounds and tank destroyers. But do know if you're in a tier 8 or something, um, even, you know, you know, premium rounds can go through it, but not consistently. Um, and also, you know, something that doesn't have a lot of penetration at tier 8 and 9. Good luck freaking fighting this thing, um, basically when it's hold down. Like you're basically going to be screwed. Even between the guns, pretty strong. Albeit, again, tier 10s with premium can punch through it. It's going to be tough though, you know, somewhat with heat. So these things are going to be pretty... They're going to be like somewhat hold down fighters. Like the 60, you know, 60 TP and stuff in the Polish tanks. Uh, so just do note, you know, they are a different playstyle. Armor-wise on the whole, it's solid. Um, again, you know, it's going to be super tough to deal with this if you're in a lower tier tank. Um, say like if you're in a tier 9, uh, like some mediums or light tanks, you're going to have to freaking chuck premium to be able to pen it here. And basically as you move down, like that's somewhat angled. Um, it gets weaker, you know, it is penable. But, you know, once you start kind of angling this and stuff, then it gets pretty difficult. They, they are definitely well armored. The sides not so much. Um, even like the side turret is pretty big and you know not super strong. But just do note these things are going to be uh, pretty difficult. At least the cupola is large. Like that's a plus. Uh, albeit you know still somewhat well protected. And at the very least tanks its own tier can deal with it. But the rest of us are... Or at the rest of us. <laughs> you know poor tanks a couple tiers lower. You are definitely going to have to... Um, think twice uh, before kind of pushing on uh, these things. Going down into the IS-3 uh, 2 as well, um, like I'm pretty sure the playstyle is kind of consistent uh, with all of these tanks here when it comes to being able, like this has the 8 degrees of gun depression, but when it comes to the armor, the, it still looks weird, the freaking guns, it looks like they're cross-eyed. The armor, you know, for its tier, nothing super special, but you know, it's still relatively strong. Well, we're played, it's a little bit weaker, but smaller cupola, super weak though, uh, a lot weaker than I would have thought. So at least it does have a cupola weak spot for lower tiers shooting it, albeit it's much smaller. And the turret front, you know, the turret front's okay. It's not going to protect you as well as you might like though, um, in some areas. So you know, this tank is a little bit more uh, sane for lower tier shooting at it at the very least. Yay! <laughs> That's the one thing about these tanks to wear. I find it odd that they have the high gun depression. You know, the premium one I feel like makes sense. You know, you're putting two guns out of a turret. Shouldn't be able to have that gun depression, but we'll see how these come out. Uh, like, here's this quirky. This looks absolutely freaking ridiculous. <laughs> this tank looks weird. I don't even know. It looks like it, a uh, kid designed it. Armor is actually decent. Like, it's nothing great. Like, you're going to get torn up, though. I've... No, armor's not decent. So the armor on the tier 8 is pretty bad. I would say at least the turret, like the cupola here is really tiny and it's super weak. Uh, like at the least with the turret, if you're hold down, you might be able to bounce some shots, but not against, you know, consistently like tier 9s, tier 10s, obviously. They're just going to cut through you. So this tank, I was a little bit worried about the grind with the 85 millimeters, but looking at the armor too, whew, this tank is going to be... You're going to be able to do some damage, but this one is going to be a little scary uh, playing the thing um, against other tanks. So I'm going to hop into a quick fight. Who knows how the hell this is going to go. Like, I'm only going to do one take here. And why not? We're going to throw some improved equipment on this thing, too. Because I'm not going to uh, worry about a crew or anything. That takes time. So you guys are about to see probably a really bad battle, if I had to guess. <laughs> Uh, vertical stabilizer. So this will be interesting. I'm just gonna eh, load up a, a little bit of standard rounds, but I'm mainly gonna be using heat. Now, comparison-wise, I do have these tanks in a comparison against similar tanks, you know, Russian tanks. But I'm gonna go. I'm not gonna go too much in depth into it. Uh, like I'll look at them a little bit after the battle here, but. I have this thing twice. More or less, though, uh, I think they compare relatively closest to the Polish line, specifically at tier 10. 
Uh, but I included the, some Russian ones in there for tier 8 and 9, uh, just you know, for comparison sakes. So anyway, let's see what happens here. Hopefully my display capture is going to work. Uh-oh, no. <laughs> Theme training, whoops. Completely forgot the... Uh, completely forgot about that. So, something in team training that I saw, um, and also it, it's kind of been mentioned on Watt Express. It isn't in the article that is up right now, uh, but we'll see if they announce it officially. But uh, Cliff and Counter Battle should be toggled on. Uh, like, you know, there's attack defense and stuff, basically stuff that they don't use in you know, random battles anyway, but Cliff is supposed to have encounter battle turned on, and also other encounter uh, maps are supposed to get some tweaks and balance uh, kind of updates. Man, I completely forgot to mention that. Yay, me. <laughs> Alright, anyway, uh, let's pop in here. I probably forgot to put something on this tank, but eh, who the hell knows. <laughs> The downside of uh, you know doing doing videos in one run, I don't really have a ton of time today, so this will be interesting to see if I can get like a interesting fight. But when it comes down to it, like this update, like the dual barrel tanks, they were shooting for it before Christmas, but they kind of pushed them back. They tweaked them a little bit in between that time frame, but not that much. I'm curious why they pushed them back since they didn't do like that many changes to them. Balance wise though, like I feel like for the most part what they do is like the Polish tanks aren't broken and that's my closest kind of comparison to I dig in further. I don't think they're gonna like completely break the game because they do have somewhat poor accuracy, penetration, uh, mobility is okay on it, you know the gun pressure's okay, you know the damage potential's okay, albeit DPM's a little bit low. It's just something to where I just find it a weird, I guess, balance decision. Like, I would have thought that they would have went with uh, basically lower gun depression, but at the same time, uh, probably would have bumped the gun up a little bit more. Um, so the fi it's, you know, it's kind of feared for its firepower, having two guns, instead of feared for its, say, not to say seal clubbing potential, but clubbing tanks that can't uh, basically penetrate it when it's kind of holed down like lower tiers um, so it'll be interesting this is obviously like one of the freaking worst maps we all of us are probably like why do we get this map considering you know like most of us are in the sd2 this is really weird playing uh like i'm having you know the the lag's a little bit longer but it feels weird playing this the turret yeah, the turret does not turn very fast. That's what's... I thought it was lag at first, but no, it, it is definitely the turret on this thing. It's like a freaking battleship. But I am getting some packet loss, so that might have uh, something to do with it. We're going to see... Oh, crap. I didn't rebind the keys on the common test server here, so there's a little bit of a delay for me firing. Uh, do note, you should rebind. I thought it was... I thought it would take uh, my configurations for like the live server but it doesn't there is a little bit of a delay if you don't rebind your uh, sa fire salvo key it's called specifically I was trying to hold my middle mouse button and nothing was happening and I'm like uh <laughs> okay so far though you know the turret Traverse is definitely something that is standing out to me, uh, like 100%. Where the hell did this guy go? Ah, there he is. He's running away. Bame. <laughs> uh, but, you know, getting back into the update, though, like, since this update is mainly is bringing the tanks, and not everyone's going to be interested in these, albeit, you know, I, I think they're... They're okay tanks. They're good. I don't think they're completely broken, um, except for when you start comparing them against uh, different tiers and, you know, uh, stuff like that. That's where I think the main issue comes from with these tanks. And, you know, smacking a tank for 941 damage. Albeit, now to get both shells back, it takes about, what, 43 seconds or something uh, to get both of these back. So the DPF on this definitely isn't great if you're trying to do that. 
Or no, it's not 41 something, it's 21 6. I thought I was doubling on I'm an idiot. <laughs> I was about to say 41 is terrible. <laughs> but yeah, I, I was kind of hoping for like a map. Like, I don't know about Pearl River yet, because they're still working on that, but maybe. Yeah, maybe I was expecting to see like the Minsk rework. Um, but, you know, it's kind of disappointing not seeing. You know, either of those. Okay, I'll just I'll just take that shot. I was waning. I was like a second from getting my other shell back, but I didn't want him to get away here. But overall, you know, it's it's still a step forward. Uh, we're gonna probably start seeing stuff about Frontline, Steel Hunter, the Sandbox. You know, big rebalance changes that they're doing. Like that's coming up. Like it it's got to be soon here. Like they're shooting for, you know, basically. I believe the first quarter here of 2020 to start doing some of this big stuff uh, that they have planned, specifically the rebalancing. So it's just kind of like a kind of, you know, oh god, Ooh, this is gonna hurt. I was trying to get over here to get a better shot for my team. Ah, I'm such an idiot. <laughs> Here's some free damage. But I'm just, yeah, I'm a, uh, not to say I'm a little disappointed. It's just would think that they'd start pumping out some more goodies alongside of uh, the patches so far. Alright, I can't pen that. My team's really close here. I feel like uh, my team... Oh god! I fired! I'm an idiot! <laughs> well, that... Good job, Cody. Awesome! 10 out of 10. You're such a good player here, but not really. Oh my god, I just shot the gun. Oh, this person's like, oh, this filthy NA player. <laughs> He's terrible. <laughs> Hopefully you guys are enjoying this, uh, my my struggle here. I'm pretty sure the, the FE4005, he either said something about me there, I don't read Russian. Um, he said something about me, or, you know, he's basically cursing because the, the 705A is not dead or something. I hit him twice, but oh god, this is not gonna go well. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to block. I'm trying to block his guns with my guns. I don't know how well this is gonna work here. I don't know which one he's gonna shoot out of. Up, oh, he just took me with one. I don't know if he has another shell. I think he might. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely dead now. I thought I was going to be able to shotgun him there with the second salvo. I was holding it. So, like, it is different gameplay. Like, that's fun using it, but... Like, is it... Like, a lot of people are like, oh, Russian, two guns, overpowered. Like, is it overpowered? Like, I don't necessarily think so right off the bat. Like, so... Let's get into things here, because it doesn't matter the outcome of this battle. But... Is mainly just again like reiterating, and I sound like a broken record. Lower tier tanks because of the gun depression turret armor combo. At least the tier nine and tier eight have some, you know, uh, really weak cupolas. But like getting into some stats here, uh, like you guys can look at the tier eight, the tier nine if you want. And I know that you know when it comes to that last battle, like my my basically webcams here are kind of covering stuff up, but you know. It is what it is. Like, this is a Watts new video. It's not a review of specific tanks. Albeit, it's starting to get like that. But specifically, like, looking at the SC2 and a 60TP, which I think is the closest kind of comparison, SC2 is a little bit uh, better standard penetration, uh, but it does have a worse premium round. Uh, 310 for a heat shell instead of the 60TP that has 317 millimeters of pen. So you do have that going for you. Same gun depression, same gun elevation. The gun traverse, so the turret traverse, that's where it felt really slow. 16 degrees. That is terrible. Um, especially, like, when you look at the tier 9 and tier 8 here, these are much higher. Like, this one's really freaking low. Like, it felt like battleship gun, basically. Uh, you know, aiming time's the same. Dispersion, you know, a little bit worse. Uh, that .38 is very noticeable. And, you know, the tier 9 is pretty inaccurate. Tier 8's a little bit uh, more accurate. And I... 
just double checking I have these actually configured there, which I do. Uh, the main thing to note here, um, so looking at the uh, DPM here, now this is just basically for standard crews and everything, no equipment and whatnot. Uh, your DPM is a little bit lower, not significantly, but just do note, you know, premium shell doesn't have a ton of penetration, albeit 60 TP is not too much better. Uh, accuracy is worse, and you know, depending on your dual guns, like uh, sometimes you might miss one, sometimes you might try to fire two, and you just completely fail, stuff like that. You have less HP armor wise. I would give the I personally would give this 60 TP, I believe, the better armor, um, especially hold down. But the uh, that doesn't mean the SC2 is bad armor wise, it's just the cupola is a little bit easier uh, to deal with on the SC2, I feel like, uh, for other tier 10s. Uh, your mobility here, uh, a little bit worse specific uh, you know, power, but a little bit better top speed, and V range is identical. So, like, you're getting a different take on the Polish uh, Heavy, you know, at least for the tier 10. And, like, ultimately, I guess we'll see how it comes out. Like, um, like I think they're going to be okay, like, relative to fighting their tanks of their own tier. Like, they're not going to be broken, but it, it's definitely worrying about, like, tier 8 fighting this thing. Uh, that's going to be... Yeah, it's, it's going to be troublesome <laughs> for a lot of reasons. In any event, though, thanks for watching. I know this kind of spiraled into a very long video uh, when it comes to the battles and talking about these tanks. But that's really the only thing, like, substantial, I feel like, coming with this. Unless they add something in on, like, the phase two of the tests. But from my understanding, like, with the test server here, they are trying to shoot um, for originally the date so this did get delayed by a day but they were shooting for um J january 28th i believe for the russian server so that's under two weeks from now you know basically we have next week a full week to basically test this and then that's it so i feel like we're not going to see anything else getting added in because that would probably require like a second you know uh, test server round and usually they don't do them just like a day or two at a time, you know So we'll see it should be the 28th for the Russian server 29th for everybody else But anyway, thanks for watching. Have a nice day, and I'll see you next time